What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Alex from APE and in today's video I'm going to be working on the clutch setup for my E30 VR6. The next step on the long road to driving my E30 VR6 is designing and fabricating a custom flywheel. This flywheel is needed to install the BMW GetRag transmission onto my 3.2 24 valve VR6 engine. I need a custom flywheel because I needed to have the VR6 crankshaft bolt pattern but the size and bolt pattern to use a BMW clutch kit that will fit in my G260. Here is the stock BMW M20 flywheel and here is a 12 valve VR6 flywheel. These can be used as reference since most BMW inline 6 engines have the same bolt pattern and all VR6 engines do too. Here you can see the BMW clutch disc compared to the VR6 clutch disc. The input shaft shape of the Volkswagen transmission is different than the shape of the Beamer trans. This is the reason why I need to use a BMW clutch kit. The total weight of my custom flywheel will need to be thicker than these stock flywheels because the engine and transmission will be separated by my adapter plate. Now that I have all the parts, I will need to measure both flywheels and head back to the office to start drawing up my custom flywheel. Now that I'm on my computer, I can show you what I drew up. I used the VR6 crankshaft bolt pattern and a BMW M3 or E36 pressure plate pattern to create my custom flywheel. I chose the E36 M3 pattern because it is a 240 millimeter disc instead of a 228 millimeter disc like the stock M20 clutch. This means I can have more clamping force with the same disc material. As you can see, the flywheel is much thicker than the stock flywheels, which can make it heavy. Made of steel, it would have weighed around 36 pounds, which is very high. For this reason, I decided to make it out of aluminum. This will cut its weight by almost half and be also less expensive to machine. In order to use an aluminum flywheel, you also need to use a friction ring that will contact the clutch disc. Aluminum would not last long because of the abrasive clutch material. Another decision that I took to reduce cost is to reuse the stock to a reg ring gear. It will be bolted between the flywheel and the crank. So now that I'm finished my design, I'm going to be printing out a plastic prototype on my 3D printer. This will give me a live model that I can assemble to confirm my, all my dimensions are correct and that the clutch will work correctly. Once my 3D file is imported into Cura, I can select my parameters and generate the program. This is a large part that will take a lot of plastic and a lot of time. Since it's about 12 inches in diameter and 3 inches high, it should take around 35 hours to print. So let's get the program loaded in the printer, cross our fingers and get it started. I purchased this large size printer especially for this project. I wanted to have a physical model that I could assemble before getting my flywheel machine. This is the biggest part I've ever printed and I really hope everything go as planned. 
it will use a large amount of plastic and will last more than a whole day. I have chosen the lowest quality and a low infill percentage to reduce print time to a maximum. At high quality, this print would have taken multiple days. One of the disadvantages of a big printer like this Anycubic model is the acceleration speed. Since the bed is so big, it can't accelerate very fast without making the whole printer move. This would affect print quality. I decided to print it pressure plate side first to reduce the need for supports, since this also saves some time. So here we are at about 18 hours in. Everything is okay up to now. Let's just hope it continues. You can see the infill pattern here. The center of the piece is hollow to reduce the amount of plastic needed to print. So here is the final product. It's finally done after 36 hours of non-stop printing. It's so awesome to be able to hold this part in my hands, starting from a 3D design and about a day and a half later, having a physical 3D part is really awesome. I'm really happy with the result. So now that I have my flywheel, let's go back to the shop and get it installed on the car. So here on the table, you can see all the drivetrain parts I need to mount my 3.2 to the BMW 5 speed. This includes the clutch parts and my custom adapter plate. For now, I decided to go with the Stage 1 E36 M3 clutch kit. It is rated at around 400 horsepower will be okay for me as long as I keep the engine in A. Uh, with the tune and cams, it should produce around 280 horsepower. The plan is to eventually go uh, with either a turbo charger or a supercharge, uh, but I wanna keep the engine as simple as possible for now, so I can troubleshoot all the drivetrain parts and all the swap parts before I actually put a lot of power in the car. For the friction plate, I'm using a Fidenza model that fits with the 240 millimeter M3 clutch disc. It will be bolted to my aluminum flywheel. I'm also using the Touareg automatic ring gear and starter. So in order, we have the ring gear, the flywheel, the friction plate, the clutch disc, and finally the pressure plate. I'll assemble them together and try them in the transmission bell housing to confirm there are no interferences. It just slides onto the input shaft and stops at the throttle bearing. It spins freely, so everything seems to be fine uh, for the transmission side. Now. Let's go and install it on the engine to confirm that the other side is also good. So like they were assembled before, the parts go on one by one for an exact mock-up on the engine. Once everything was bolted up, I installed the adapter plate and slid the transmission on. Everything seems to line up correctly, which is great news. 
this was definitely one of the biggest obstacles of this swap and I'm finally starting to see the end result so that's awesome. I can now confidently send my final design out for machining. This was really the last big custom part that I needed to get done before I can start thinking of starting the car. So I thank you guys for watching and I see you next time.